I want to take as my text this morning our first reading or a portion of it from Isaiah's uh, prophecy, Isaiah chapter 40, and in particular verses 28 through 31. Isaiah chapter 40 and verses 28 through 31. If you have a Bible, I want to encourage you to turn there. Isaiah chapter 40 and beginning at verse 28. And I'd like to read that again just so it's fresh in our minds. The prophet says, have you not known and have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths faint and become weary and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This morning I want to talk about being empowered by God. Being empowered by God. I guess uh, most of us, if not all of us, would be happy to grant that God is powerful, even all-powerful or as is uh, often referred to in theology as God's omnipotence or his all powerfulness. W.H. Griffith Thomas in his classic work, Principles of Theology, defines omnipotence as a power adequate to all possible requirements. A power adequate to all possible requirements which is to say that God possesses all the power he needs to do everything that he's ever done, to do what he is doing now, uh, and to do what he has yet to do. And, and, and we might say, well, that's all very nice, uh, that God is all powerful and you know uh, that he's omnipotent, if you want to get fancy about it. But in all honesty, we might ask, what does any of that really have to do with us personally. Well, what makes this truth about God personal to us, or that it could be personal to us, is that God doesn't keep his power just for himself. Indeed, God shares this power, even with us, if we should ever want it. In context, the prophet Isaiah is writing to a people that are struggling they they feel that uh, that uh, as though God has uh, abandoned them, uh, even that uh, God uh, perhaps is even ignorant of their circumstance. Perhaps you've felt that way yourself before in the midst of your troubles, and they're wondering that that uh, if God can actually help, even if He is aware of their troubles, and this is what prompts uh, the prophet. To say what he says in verse 28. In fact, notice again verse 28. He says, he asks this rhetorical question. Have you not, have you not known uh, and have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary. And his understanding, his knowledge is unsearchable. Isaiah is saying what? Don't you know this about God? That you've created this mindset? That you think God doesn't know about your circumstance? That you think that perhaps you are abandoned? Or wondering whether he can help? Haven't you ever heard that God can do all of these things? Of course he's aware of your circumstance. And of course he can help. Indeed, Isaiah says, that God is all powerful. And then he enumerates the ways in which he is all powerful. Now, first, that, that God is all powerful in who he is. Indeed, Isaiah says that Yahweh, the Lord, uh, is the everlasting God. That is to say that he's eternal uh, in his own person uh, and according to the nature of his own being. He's eternal. That is to say that he has always existed without beginning. He exists now, and he shall always exist without any end. 
uh, Eugene Peterson in the message put it this way, God doesn't just come and go. He's eternal. He always has been, he is, and he always shall be. And God is speaking in the book of Revelation, chapter one and verse eight says this, I'm the alpha and the omega. Uh, they, uh, th this is uh, to, to, to help, help us understand, uh, alpha is the first letter in the uh, Greek uh, alphabet and omega is the last. It's another way of God saying, I'm the beginning and the end of all things. Uh, 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 and then he goes on and says, uh, who is and who was and who is to come. I've, I've always existed, I exist now, and I always shall exist. I'm the Almighty. And so God doesn't live and die the way in which we do. In fact, if you think about it, we're very passive in our conception and very, we are completely passive in our conception and our birth. We don't choose that, it just happens to us. And we're equally out of control at our death. Indeed, I suspect that if we had control of our death, we wouldn't, people wouldn't die. But it comes and there's nothing we can do about it. But God isn't anything like that. God has existence and being in himself and always has and does now and always shall be an expression of his omnipotence. And then Isaiah says that God is inexhaustible. He never tires out, or as Peterson puts it in the message, God doesn't get tired and he doesn't have to pause to catch his breath. And so God is all powerful in who he is. But then not only that, God is also all powerful in what he does. Indeed, Isaiah says that God is the creator of the ends of the earth. Uh, we, we admire the earth, uh, the, the, uh, an ocean, a sunset. Uh, the, 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 the mountains and all of that, the beauty of the earth, but God is the one who created it and all of it. Uh, in, in fact, the earth in its entirety. And so no matter where you go, east, west, north or south, whether you go up or whether you go down, God created it all. Or as uh, you, Peterson puts it in the message, God is the creator, creator of everything you see, and even what you can't see. And so whether we're looking through a telescope or whether we're looking through a microscope at, the, at, the, at creation, God is the one who created it all. And so God is all powerful in what he does. And then God is all powerful in what he knows. Indeed, notice again, uh, verse 28. Have you not have you not known he's, he asks his readers uh, or those who are listening to his original preaching have you not known have you not heard of course you have heard uh, about the god of our fathers as we might put it all that god has done for israel as he speaks uh, to the israelites have you not known have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. And so what God knows and understands is, uh, is, we might say, past finding out. We can't wrap our heads around it. Um, God is not a scientist. Uh, uh, looking at the created order and discovering new things. He's the one who created it uh, and the one who knows everything. In fact, that's the reason why his knowledge is what we might say inscrutable, <laughs> past finding out, un unsearchable, because he knows everything, uh, even everything about us, about you and about me. Even uh, the thoughts and intentions of our heart is something that God is intimately familiar with. He knows all about us in our public life. He knows all about us in our private life. Again, Peterson in the message says, God knows everything inside and out. There is nothing he doesn't know. And so when we're wondering, well, does God know how I'm suffering in the midst of my troubles? Well, of course he knows. And that's what's Isaiah, what Isaiah is saying to his audience. 
and what God is saying to us as we've become the audience. God knows everything inside and out. Indeed, by his power, he knows everything about our successes. He knows everything about our failures. He knows everything by his power about our, our, about our joys and everything about our sorrows. And the extraordinary thing is that he cares. In fact, Peter, I thought about this, Peter writing uh, in his first letter in the fifth chapter and at the seventh verse, he said, cast all your cares on him. Cast all your cares on God because he cares for you. And so God is all powerful. But not only that, God is, God is not just all powerful. God shares his power, which is an extraordinary thing. In fact, who, who, what other power would he share but his own if he was going to share power? <laughs> Notice again, have you not heard, have you not known? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't faint or grow weary like we do. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. There it is. He gives power. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary in their physical being. And young men shall fall exhausted, even though they thought perhaps they never would. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so Isaiah says that God shares his power. He gives power. He gives strength. And with whom does he share it? Well, he shares it with those who find themselves in need of it. He shares power with those who are worn out physically. And, uh, and he shares it with those who, who have, uh, are overcome emotionally. And many times, isn't it true, uh, that, uh, that those things are so very much connected. When I'm worn out emotionally, my 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 physical being is is affected, and and when I'm when I'm sick or I'm worn out physically, my my emotional state is affected. I love what Anne Lamott wrote in in her book Plan B: Further Thoughts on Faith. She she, she said this. She said everyone has been having a hard time with life this year. Well, not all of it. Just the waking hours. <laughs> Just the waking hours. And perhaps uh, that might be a little humorous to you too, because you know what that means. Uh, to, to having a hard time with life just when you're awake and when you're aware of what's going on in your life. And so God shares his power with those who are worn out physically, and he shares his power with those who are overcome emotionally. And he shares. Uh, his, his power with those who perhaps thought they wouldn't ever need it, like the young. I, I, that was what I was thinking of when I was looking at this verse 30. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted, even though they th thought that they would never get exhausted. And sometimes that's the case. Uh, when we become overwhelmed, it comes to us maybe as a bit of a surprise. But he shares his power when we recognize that and find ourselves. I like what somebody said to that God's office is at the end of your rope. And that's what he's talking about here. Being at the end of your rope. God shares his power with those perhaps who thought maybe that they wouldn't ever need God's help. And with those who put their hope and their trust in him. Indeed, God doesn't give his strength to those who don't want it or to those who don't value it or don't yet think or know indeed that they need it. Rather, God gives his power to those who wait on him, to those who say, Lord, uh, my life is in your hands. I'm, I'm waiting on you. You know, you know my circumstance and I'm waiting on your power and I'm waiting on your strength. I love what the Cuban pastor said in Cuba, of course, a restricted nation where it's very difficult to be a Christian openly and share your faith and share the word. But here, this Cuban pastor, 
He said, everything is difficult here, but nothing is impossible <laughs> because God reigns. Everything is difficult here, but nothing is impossible because God reigns. That sounds to me like a man empowered by the God who reigns. And so God gives his power to those who wait on him, to those who submit and recognize his lordship, knowing that he's God and that they're not, who put their trust in him, who put their hope in him. And to these, Isaiah says, that God promises strength. And then, and, and, and then it's illustrated in three different ways. First, strength like, like, like the flight of the eagle. They shall fly like eagles, the prophet says. Um, of course, it's a metaphor for e extraordinary power. To the ancients, the eagle was a, uh, what, there was no bird more powerful. I'm not exactly sure if that's not even true now, if, if there is a bird more powerful. In fact, you ought to go uh, on YouTube and, and type in uh, eagle cam. Uh, and they've actually put cameras on the backs of eagles so that they could see where the eagles fly. The, the eagles fly over mountains, extraordinary power. And God promises to those who wait on him, who trust in him, who hope in him in the midst of their troubles, that they will mount up with the strength of eagles and that they'll run and not tire. And that they'll walk and not faint. Now it seems sort of, a, if you look at that, sort of a, a dis, in descending order from going from stronger uh, to weaker, flying, running, walking. But walking is a, is a metaphor signifying perseverance. You, know, you, you don't run all the time, but walking is something that is ongoing. In fact, life is often uh, described in the Bible as a walk the Christian walk, our walk in the spirit, which is another way of saying live in the spirit. And so to walk and not faint is God saying, I will give you the strength to persevere, to keep on moving forward, regardless of the circumstance in which you find yourself. I don't know who it was who said it, but I sure like it. Somebody said, don't tell God how big your problems are, but tell your problems how big your God is. And I think that that's really Isaiah's point, the point he's making here in our text, that no matter how big our problems are, and no matter how much we might be tempted to, to give up in the face of them, God is bigger <laughs> than our problems. And that there isn't anything that we can't face or can't overcome by means of his power. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Being empowered by God. Let us pray. I don't know, Lord, I, I suppose it has something to do with how Isaiah starts this passage uh, don't you haven't you heard and and don't you know i think we forget maybe the things that we do know uh, maybe because uh, we're so startled and overwhelmed by the things uh, that trouble us and uh, that uh, become sources of anxiety to us um we, we forget the truth and so we become bound uh, and and overborne uh, by our troubles but you don't want us to be overborne by our troubles. You want us to remember the truth. You want us, you want us to remember that you're bigger than our problems and bigger than our troubles. And to run to you and find strength because, and power because not only are you all powerful, but you share that power with all those who would have it. It's a valuable thing, not something that can be bought with money, but something that we have just by trusting in you and to reaching out our hand and saying, I'll, I'll have some of that, Lord. <laughs> I think about the Apostle Paul saying, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And maybe, Lord, uh, there's some watching today where that's really what's needed. Indeed, we all need it from day to day, your strength uh, to, to remember the truth and to live by it. 
We remember the words of Jesus who said, if you abide in my word, don't forget my word, but abide in my word. You are truly my disciples and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We pray, Lord, that this truth that we have thought about together this morning might take root in us and give us the freedom that we all long for. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.